If you'd like to, to read along, we'll be in 2 Samuel in the fifth chapter. In the 17th verse. But when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines came up to seek David, and David heard of it and went down to the hold. The Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim, and David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Will thou deliver them into mine hand? And the Lord said unto David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thy hand. And David came to, to Baal Perazim, and David smote them there and said, The Lord hath broken forth upon mine enemies before me as the breach of waters. Therefore he hath called the name of that place Baal Perazim. And there they left their images, and David and his men burned them. The Philistines came yet up again and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, Thou shalt not go up, but fetch a compass before thee and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. And let it be when thou hearest the sound of a going in the tops of the mulberry trees that then thou shalt bestir thyself, for then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. And David did so as the Lord had commanded him and smote the Philistines from Geba until thou come to Gezer. With what mistakes that I know that I made. Uh, that's reading 17th through the 25th verse of the 5th chapter of 2 Samuel. I would like to refer to uh, a statement that Isaiah made uh, many, many, many years uh, after what happened with David here with the Philistines. He says in Isaiah 28 and 21, For the Lord shall rise up as in Mount Parazim. Now, there must have been something very profound that happened at Mount Parazim. And if I have a title to this this morning, it would be Remember Mount Parazim. Now David had just been appointed king of Israel in Hebron. Uh, there he reigned and then eventually, uh, years later, they all came together as a united nation uh, and then he reigned from Jerusalem. But the Philistines heard about it. They knew David well. Uh, they seemed to be gluttons for punishment. I can't imagine them wanting to face David on any field, anywhere. But anger and evil has no reason. And we can find that out uh, for evil in this country. Uh, and the anger that it produces and still anger and reason and reason eludes them. Now, I said that something very profound must have happened here. And we find uh, that uh, David uh, went to the Lord now, David was possibly the greatest warrior that this world has ever seen. He had won more battles. Uh, he had defeat, defeated, no telling how many Philistines he had already killed. Uh, no telling how many uh, battles in the scriptures give us an account of most of those uh, that he uh, had uh, come out victorious and why they would want to meet him again. It's beyond my comprehension, but it says they all came out. 
They thought if they had uh, greater numbers that they might have greater success uh, defeating one of God's men. But we can find in the scriptures and we can find in the history of the scriptures, it doesn't matter how many people stand against God's people. The remnant, if God is with them, shall always prevail. God has shown us this time after time again. Even with Gideon, he says, Gideon, you have too many people. You have too many people. I want to show something here. Uh, we, we don't need all of these people that you have. We don't need but 300. I want you to take the 300. I want you to surround the camp there, and we're going to have a victory, and I'm going to show that I am the king of Israel. I am the king of this nation. I am the ruler over it. I'm all powerful in it. That's what God wants to show and he still wants to show today as the head of the body of Christ that he is all powerful, that he is almighty, that he can perform wondrous works in the presence of his people for all the world to see. We, we can learn some of David's success and why he was successful all these years. You, you would think at this point... Uh, God had already, uh, through Samuel, let it be known that he was, he, he was anointed king and he was waiting uh, for, no doubt, the death of Saul to, to take that place. And all of the battles that he had won and all the things that he had done, he went to the Lord. We can't do anything without the Lord. We have no direction without him. We can't go on without him. We can't proceed in battle without our captain. He's the head of the church in all things of the church. He is the head of the preeminence. He is the one that is to direct his troops. He is the one to tell us when to go, when to get up and go, when to sit down and do nothing. And sometimes that is the will of God for us to do nothing. And then sometimes he says it's time to stand, it's time to get up, and it's time to move. Now, he says, shall I go up to the Philistines? And then he asked another question. Will thou deliver them into my hand? Do you see how that he uh, was so obedient unto his Lord? Do you see how that he was so su successful over all of those years, all that he had done and all the battles that he had entered into? Obviously, he had taken it with the same approach as he did this, this, this one uh, as one of a much uh, older age. Shall I go up? That's why God uh, would not have Saul. He says, Saul was not obedient unto me. I want obedience and disobedience is a witchcraft. Brothers and sisters, uh, we are still bound uh, to be obedient unto God. We have uh, no more leeway today than David had in his day. Our Lord is our head and we are to do everything that he directs us to do. You say we don't have direction. If we don't have direction, we're not asking for it. If we truly want direction, if we truly want to be obedient to uh, the, the commands of God, he will show us what we need to do in the direction we need to take. But God said, go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thy hand. No doubt, David, I'm with ye. Go out with all confidence. No doubt, David, I will go before you and I will deliver them into your hand. I, I am amazed that David was amazed. And David this day was greatly amazed at what he witnessed of the power of God. Now Isaiah uh, used it as a warning. Uh, do you remember Mount Parasim? 
Do you remember the God of Mount Parasm? He was telling uh, even God's people, you had better. David went into battle just as a God told him to. And doubtless God delivered him. And doubtless David witnessed a complete and total rout of the Philistines. It was an overwhelming victory. And I believe that even it took David aback at the mighty power and presence of God as he was uh, they were going into them no doubt the Philistines were falling like flies they were running they were disassembled and God overpowered his enemies Jehoshaphat said we have no might to get this great company Neither do we know what to do, brothers, sisters. I've been like that so many times in trying to serve him, and I'll admit since I have been here, Lord, we have no might against this great company, but Lord, neither do I know what to do. But he says one thing I do know, Lord. My eyes are upon you. If we keep our eyes upon the captain, if we keep a him in view, him in focus, listen to him, we're gonna win. We are not defeatist and we will not be defeated. David renamed the place. I'm gonna call it from now on, Baal Parasm. He says God came through like a, a breach of water. God overpowered uh, David's enemy like a breach of water. Uh, can you get a view of that like a dam that has broke? Uh, you, maybe you've seen pictures or images of that. Uh, how all of a sudden uh, that everything is fine and then in a very instant that dam breaks and it's a mighty wall of water. There have been waters, uh, walls of water like that have to destroy towns and cities and communities different times uh, in history. That's what David was saying. How that God by his power come over them like that mighty wall of water just like Pharaoh's army in the Red Sea. We're going to call it Baal Parasm. Well, what does that mean? It means master of breakthrough. <laughs> or God of breakthrough. I have been up trying by the help of God to tell you what we need to do. And I believe we are heeding those things. And Brother Brad has done that the last two nights. You need to take up and beware when God is willing to give you warnings and God is willingly and patiently giving you direction as to what we need to do. It says that Jesus Christ is in the midst of the candlesticks. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And through his preached word, uh, uh, by the power of the Spirit of God, uh, he's letting us know what uh, we need to do. And we need to heed the warning. We need to heed the admonition. In Deuteronomy 1 and 6, in the children of Israel were in the wilderness. The Lord says, you have dwelt too long in this mount. You have uh, been around this mount too long. It says, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess it. And I believe that's what he's saying to us today. You've been around the mount too long. You've heard enough. You know enough. You prayed enough. Now you need to do something about it. You know, we can use prayer as a crutch. 
sometimes instead of doing, we just want to pray more. And I'm not discounting prayer in any way. Don't get me wrong there at all. But when we have prayed and we have got in touch with the Lord, it's time to stop praying and start doing and start acting. It says that God gave David the Philistines into David's hand. David talked to the Lord. David prayed to the Lord. David got his answer and then David got up and did something. It's like the person that, uh, it's not a joke, but it's, it's in, enlightening somewhat that was sitting on the roof and you remember in New Orleans when they were, they were flooded and people all over the roofs everywhere. And uh, a person come with a helicopter and shut it down. It's time to go. Well, no, I prayed to the Lord. I'm, I'm waiting for the Lord to deliver me. And then a boat came. I, no, I'm, 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 the Lord's going to deliver me. When he perished, he said, well, I sent a helicopter and a boat. What, what were you waiting for? What were you waiting for? Now, if David had got the word from the Lord, yes, yes, doubtless, I am going to deliver you and I am going to uh, subdue your enemies and they're going to be a rout. Doubtless, I'm doing it. David had to act. And brothers and sisters, uh, why do you think they call it acts? It's because that God's servants were doing something. They were acting. They were proactive. And that's what we've got to do. Now, in Micah, in the second chapter, in the 12th verse, I will surely assemble, O Jacob, all of thee. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together as the sheep of Basra, as a flock in the midst of their fold. They shall make great noise by reason of the multitude of men. The breaker is come up before them. They have broken up and have passed through the gate and are gone out by it and their king shall pass before them and the God on the head of them. Who is the breaker? It says the breaker is come up before them. Jesus Christ uh, has never, uh, never uh, uh, directed us to go anywhere that he did not give us and supply us everything that we needed to do it. And he says, I will not go up unless I go with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you everywhere. And if I take you into battle, I'm right there. And the breaker is uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, he is the captain. He is the one that breaks through. And it feels like for a long time we've been standing at this wall. This wall that seems sometimes just as hard as stone. And I so want to be on the other side of that wall. And I can't do it. And brothers and sisters, you can't do it. And all of us together, beating on the wall, we can't do it. We can combine our forces with all and every sinew and muscle and strength we have and beat on that thing and we cannot make it come down. Jesus Christ he is the breaker. Jesus Christ He's the one that can break through. Now, the Lord said, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. I, I admit to you, it's a little, a little hard to comprehend exactly, and there's a lot of uh, versions of what that might be. How do we take it by force? Well, we think in terms of, 
of weapons, and we're not supposed to do that. We take it in terms of, of, of fighting. We're not supposed to do that. We take it in terms of, of all of those things. And, and uh, Brother Brad talked about the man that was slain over there in another country by, uh, by those uh, indigenous people there that knew nothing of God. They were amazed that when, uh, when they had hit the man with a spear and him holding a spear, that he didn't fling one back. How are we to take it by force? In Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And we find in Luke 4, 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to set at liberty them that are bruised. Uh, how, how do we take that? We take it like David did. We get behind our captain. He can set at liberty those that are bound by Satan, those that are bound by sin. And Satan is not gonna turn loose of them easily. God uh, Satan has his claws upon those people. They are fitted for destruction. They are his already. And he's doing everything that he can do to hold on to them and sinner friend. He's doing everything that he can do to hold on to you. Don't you see that? The lies and the deception and what he's trying to tell you to not seek the Lord. The Lord is not worth finding out. But I tell you what, sinner friend, if you let him continue, he's gonna have his claws around you till you fall off into hell. How do you loose a sinner from the grips of Satan? Violence. Violence. It takes something very violent. It takes something very strong. It takes something very powerful. A lot more than what you and I can muster. What it takes is, is the power of God. You remember the legions of angels and the Lord came and they were terrified. Just his presence. And I tell you what, Satan may do a number on you, but he's not gonna do a number on my Lord. He may turn you inside out in every which way there is, but when my Lord comes upon the scene, oh, Satan, the devil, he's a coward. And when my Lord comes in, he's gonna turn loose of anything he's holding on to, and he's gonna run. Only our Lord can do those things. We have another account of this in First Chronicles in the 14th chapter. Belparazim. Master of breakthrough. I've been to Bel Parazim a time or two, not physically, but I've been to Mount Parazim and I have witnessed the power of God. And I've mentioned this a lot of times and, 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 and I'll mention it many more if I keep living. The night that Isaac got saved, that's been a long time ago now, 25, 26 years. We were in service out there at Antioch. Isaac was the first to get up and go to the altar. The first time he said he ever felt like that he was lost. They started falling to the altar. And over here and back there, in about an hour, they started getting up, saying the Lord saved the soul. I, I lost count. It's about nine or 10 that night uh, that the Lord had saved. And I looked over uh, the congregation. I, I, I would say there were probably 50 to 60 people uh, shouting at the same time. 
I've been to Mount Perazim. I have witnessed the breakthroughs. I have witnessed how God can take a cold service and just all of a sudden just have a breakout. And they're just like David. That was amazing. That was amazing. Surely you have your own parasm in your life. Other times in my life as well, when I've witnessed the mighty power of God working among his people. And I remember Isaac getting up off the altar and Patrick, our oldest son, uh, picked him up and he's, he would just go going around and around with him and, and we were rejoicing with them and, and the others and, and we could just stand back and see the salvation of the Lord. That was not of anything that anyone around them had accomplished. It was the master of breakthrough and that's what I am looking for here for that wall to come down and only our Lord can do it. And we go marching through. In First Chronicles, the 14th chapter, and it says, and the Philistines yet again spread themselves abroad in the valley. Can you imagine? They don't sound real bright, but you got to give them credit for their braveness. Therefore, David again inquired of God. He didn't just take it for granted that, that they were going to be delivered again. Lord, they've assembled again. What do I do? How do I approach it? And God said unto him, Go not up after them, turn away from them, and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. And it shall be when thou shalt hear a sound of going in the tops of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt go out to battle. See, God was very specific. Don't go head on. You go around by the mulberry trees. And you wait behind the mulberry trees. See, we can't get ahead of him. And, and I've been in services where I thought God's people were trying to get ahead of the Lord. And it's, it's not a good feeling. And trying to manufacture things and trying to make things happen that, that I didn't feel that the Lord was in. We can't, we can't do that either. either. We've got to stay behind the Lord, but we've got to stay close. What did he tell his disciples? Tarry ye in Jerusalem. Wait. 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 You can't do nothing without me. Don't go into battle without me. But till you be endued with power from on high. And then we see on the day of Pentecost uh, when God uh, came in among them by his spirit and he empowered his church. Uh, and it says it was as a rushing mighty wind. I don't know what God did in the, those mulberry trees. <laughs> I don't know what kind of sound he made. <sighs> That's what I'm talking about. Yes, we've got to pray. We've got to prepare. Yes, we've got to be fit uh, as uh, Brother Brad has talked both nights. Yes, our heart uh, has got to be right and, and we need those burdens and all of those things. But when we're standing by the mulberry tree and you feel the rustling of the winds as the Spirit of God begins to move among His people, Move! You're not going to do anything under the mulberry tree. There is nothing that you can accomplish there. 
And then it is time to act. Then it is time to move. What's quenching the spirit? It's complete and utter disobedience to God. Nothing else. People take that lightly. That's all it is. It's direct disobedience to God. And to him that is as witchcraft. Seeing, O Baron, that, that did a snot bear break forth into singing. I, I think of Abraham and Sarah. God had promised Abraham that they were going to have a son. And, and through that seed, the whole world is going to be blessed. He had promised Abraham and Sarah a son, and then Sarah gave up on it, and evidently Abraham did too, and it caused great deals of problems. And it appeared unto Abraham, says, now it's time. Sarah, 90. He was 100. It's time. I'm going to give you... I'm going to give you that son that I promised. Can you imagine? Especially Sarah. Wanting a child so bad. And I, I feel so sorry for couples that, that want children and that try and go with doctors and try everything where they can have a child. They agonize on it. You know, if we don't have children... Uh, being born into the family of God in our presence, uh, we should agonize likewise. It should trouble us. I don't want to to be barren. And I know that you don't want to either. I want to be fruitful. I want this church to multiply and be fruitful. And I want to see it and I want to witness it. Break forth with singing, O barren, for ye shall bring forth more than the married wife. Isaac. means laughter. We had a big revival service at Faith one night and I was pastor down there and two or three, three or four people got saved that night. I don't remember. There was a boy about eight or nine in the back of the house. He got saved back there and I didn't even know he had been seeking, but he was. And he says, I need, I, I want to go tell Brother Swindle, about being saved, he come up and he, he told me, look, Brother Swindle, Lord, just saved my soul. I just started laughing. I couldn't help it. I didn't want to help it. I guess that's just the way that I react. Just started laughing. And he went back to his grandma and says, Brother Swindle's laughing at me. She says, no, he's not laughing at you. He's rejoicing. That's what I want. I want want to know that laughter. And I want to know like Sarah did when she held Isaac in her arms. No doubt she laughed. It's been too long. It has been too long in waiting as Sarah waited We have been waiting and it's time, it's high time that we break forth in laughter. The only way that's possible if we have a breakthrough and the only way that's possible if the master of breakthrough does it. (laughs) 
David therefore did as God commanded him, and they smote the host of the Philistines. And the fame of David went out into all lands, and the Lord brought the fear of him upon all nations. Do you see the respect for the Lord's people that there used to be? Do you even sense the fear that people have of the Lord's house as it used to be? It wasn't those people. It wasn't those people at Antioch that I was talking about. It wasn't those people in your day. It wasn't those people throughout the 220-something year history of old union. It, it wasn't any of those people. It was the captain of those people. It was the head of that body. And when he begins to work among his people, his people will find respect among the world just as David did. Surely there's something going on there. Surely the Lord is in that place. Surely the Lord is blessing that people. And that's what I want them to say about old union once again. I want us to be different in a good way once again. Terrible as an army with banners. Marching triumphantly, not only out of the battle, but marching triumphantly into it. As Jehoshaphat did, and as David did, they were rejoicing as they went in it. We act like we're defeated, brothers and sisters. How could we possibly be defeated? We are victorious, as that song says, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We cannot fail. We will not lose, just as our Lord told David. Doubtless, brothers and sisters, doubtless we are victorious. Doubtless we're going to win. And when the Lord gives that breakthrough and we fall in behind him, all the devils in hell can go hand in hand and they can pull on it, they can yank, they can scream, they can cry, they can do whatever they want to do, but they can do nothing to stop my captain. And then as I have heard, he is mighty to save and none can hinder. It's time to take hold of the promise. We stood around that mount too long. It's time to get off to Canaan. It's time to possess that that the Lord has promised us. It's time to take hold of the blessings that he wants to give us.